This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, discounted prices, miniaturemarket.com. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today, we're gonna get on the trains again. We're gonna be on the railways, going around the Great Lake area of North America, and we're also gonna be going around the world, but we're not just using rails this time. We're gonna be on some boats and some ships and trying to get around the world that way. Today, we're talking about Ticket to Ride, Rails and Sails, the latest, I guess, standalone big box game of Ticket to Ride. This box is pretty huge. Uh, two to five players, box says 90 minutes to play it. Let's take a look at what's different, and I'll see you on the other side. At the beginning of the game, you'll pick your color. You'll start off with trains like normal. But in this game, you'll also get three harbors, which I'll show you what they do later. And you also start with ships of your color as well. Depending on the map, you'll start with a default number of ships and trains, but you can also choose how many of each you'd like once you know how to play the game. Now the game is double-sided. This is the Great Lakes side, the other side is the world. I'll talk about this one first. Now as you can see, there's a lot of differences between the normal version and this because obviously the sails. Now on this map, anywhere you see ovals is where ships will end up going as you build routes. And anywhere you see rectangles, it's the normal trains. And that's the differences between the routes on both of the boards. Now in both versions of this game, uh, you'll take five tickets at the beginning and you have to keep at least three of them. And they do have the little route showing you where things are. Uh, and they have this, the big long ones are red and the smaller ones are green. Other than that, these tickets are pretty much normal like the other ones. Now just like the normal ticket to ride, on your turn you can take up to two face-up cards uh, unless you take a while then it's the only one. Or you can take them off the top, but notice that there's two different decks. We have the train deck and now we have the ship deck. The game starts with three trains and three ships, but this will change over time. Uh, because when someone takes a card, let's say they take this green train, they'll take this and they get to choose where this gets re uh, replaced by. Here? Well here, maybe they, they're working on lots of ships and they want to bring more ships out. So this distribution of cards will change over the course of the game after everybody's turn. Also note that the wilds can be both trains or ships. They can be any color, but these only come from the, ship de uh, the train deck. So the train deck is actually larger than the ship deck. Also notice that some ship cards actually have two ships on there denoted by those logos here. This is a single ship, that's a double ship. Also notice that some of them have these harbor icons on them and some of them don't. We'll talk about that later. Now most of the rules are standard Ticket to Ride rules. If I wanted to go here though, I could throw in a white ship. Now remember, this has to be a ship, not a train, where this would have to be a train, not a ship. So if I was able to play that on my turn, I would put that on the white ship. And so that, that's the big difference there. Now, the harbors are very different. Uh, these are the tickets I chose to keep at the beginning of, my, uh, of the game. Notice I have a couple of them that go to Chicago. Once you have at least one piece going into that city, on your turn and for your turn, instead of doing anything else, you can build a harbor. And how a harbor is built is you have to take two cards of the same color from ships that also have this harbor logo. So I have two cards that are the pinks with the ships, the pinks are the purple. And then you also have to do two cards of the trains of the same color that also have a harbor. Here's a train card with a harbor. I don't have another one, but I can use a wild because a wild can be used for anything. You could actually even use this for a ship harbor if you wanted to. So in this case, two trains, two ships of the same color, and they all have a harbor. And now I can build one of my three harbors in this place right there. Now, some places on the board don't have this and you can't build harbors there. They have to have this anchor, which most of the cities have them. Now, harbors are very important in this game because at the end of the game, if you have a harbor somewhere, if you have one completed ticket going into that harbor, you'll get 10 points. If you have two, you'll get 20. If you have three, you'll get 30. At the beginning of the game, if you remember, I have already have two tickets that have Chicago. If I've completed both these tickets, at the end of the game, that one harbor is going to get me 20. If later on I grab a ticket and finish it that also has Chicago, I'll get 30. And so you can really build up a ton of points with these harbors. Also notice some of the routes are very big. They go all the way up to 9 for 27 points. And so that's something that's a little bit different here as well. Now, two other things you can do on your turn. Like normal, Ticket to Ride, you can add more tickets. You grab four of these and you have to keep at least one of them. That would be your turn. Another thing you do is maybe you're getting towards the end of the game. You don't have any trains left. You only have one, but you have a route that you need more than one train. For your turn, you can turn in as many as you want as these ships to get that many trains. So you would take 
three more trains. We would put these three back, but you would lose one point for each of these. So you'd lose three points, but I'd get the trains I need to complete the routes that I need. Now this will continue until any one player has six or fewer total pieces between trains and the, and the ships. And at that point, everybody else, including that player, gets two turns instead of one like normal ticket to ride. You take your current score, plus all your, your tickets that you've done or not done like normal. You, you get positive points if you get them, minus points if you don't. Uh, you count the harbor points as I already showed you how to score earlier in this overview. But if you for every harbor you did not place, you get minus four, and then whoever has the most is the winner. Let's take a look at the other side of the board. Now on this side of the board, it's the whole entire world. And this one has a lot more sails than say the other board did. It, it appears or it feels like. Lots more sails, not as many trains. And you also get a lot more pieces. Uh, 60 total pieces of trains and ships, combination of those versus 50 in the other board. So this one will take a little bit longer. Now a couple differences in this board is number one, some of these, the board wraps. So this will go to Lima. And this one goes up to somewhere else. And some of them, they, they basically go off to other sections of the board. Also, this one goes up to eight uh, long for 21 points. And so when we were looking at Sydney just a moment ago, it wraps around that other side of the board and comes to Lima there. Also, there's these new things called pair routes. These are difficult terrain. And here you'll see this here. What this means is that for each train that you place here, you have to have two cards that are the same color. So in this case, I would have to drop two trains of the same color. Maybe I drop two pinks here, and I have to draw two trains of the same color again, but it doesn't have to be the same color as this. So maybe for this one, I drop a green, and I drop a wild, and then I get the other train there. Those are the pair routes. Now the harbors work the same as the other version of this board on the other side, but instead of getting 10, 20, and 30 points for one, two, or three completed tickets into those harbors, you get 20, 30, and 40. So the harbors are even more uh, prestigious in this version. Now the last difference between the other side of the board are the tickets. Most of them are just like the other one with harbors and they work the same way. Eight tickets out of the entire deck are called tour tickets. They have more than two cities. In this case, if you go exactly from city one to city two to city three in your way, you'll get nine points. If you do connect all these cities but you don't go exactly in that order, you'll get six points. If you don't connect all three, you'll get minus 15. Some of them might be spread across the whole board. You'd have to go from Anchorage then to the second city, then third, then fourth, which means you'll probably have to be trying to loop your way around off the map like I had showed you earlier. 18 if you do it in that order, 12 if you don't, and minus 24 if you don't even do it at all. And that's the, all the scoring at the end is the same as the other version, and that's Ticket to Ride, Rails and Sales. Well, there it is, Ticket to Ride, Rails and Sales. Now, let me show you the perspective I'm coming from with this review. Uh, in general, I love Ticket to Ride and everything about it. Uh, the game itself, the USA version, made my top 10 games of all time. Uh, I have pretty much every expansion for it. I absolutely love it. I always play, it's the one game I always play with people that haven't played games before. And I've had more people play, get into this hobby because of Ticket to Ride than anything else. So I love it. Now, right, Rails and Sails looks so cool to me. Now let me first talk about the things that I liked about it and then I'll divert from there. Um, I, I think all, this, all the mechanisms and the new things that they've added to this are all interesting and I like them all. Uh, I like the, the thought process of trying to figure out, hey, what am I going to pull right now? Do I going to pull a, a, you know, a train card or a, a ship card? And then which one do I want to refill it with? And those are the main new choices that you'll have on every turn of the game. And I like that aspect of it. I, I like trying to figure out which one was which. Uh, I like the harbors. I like the idea of, hey, if you have a lot of tickets, it kind of, since there's no bonus for the longest train or the most tickets, you've got these harbors and you're trying to get these, as many uh, of these tickets that go into the same harbor to get a lot of points, but the harbors are hard to get. You need, you know, two, you're either going to be throwing down four wilds or, you know, two cards with the same color of, and of the, you know, the, the, the anchor on them of trains and the same thing as ships. And it's hard to get these harbors down. Uh, but they give you huge points if you can get, if you can get you know, a, lot of, uh, a lot of your cards into those. And I liked that aspect of it as well. Um, and I liked putting the little ships out and such. So overall, I liked the new mechanisms that were in the game. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Now, what did I not enjoy about, about this? For me, the biggest thing for me is the box says 90 minutes. And I feel that's actually pretty accurate. Um, even the shorter map, the, the, the one that has the, you know, the Great Lakes, you start off with about 50 pieces uh, between the trains and the sails, and then the game stops as soon as anyone has six or less. So that pieces wise is about the same as the normal ticket to ride. But 
What happens is, is because you're going after these harbors, there's many turns where people are trying to get the cards that they need because those are hard to get in order to get those harbors. So just because there's the same amount of pieces played per game for someone to go out and end the game, it doesn't necessarily mean it's the same length as Ticket to Ride. It definitely is a lot longer. Uh, and then on the bigger map, the world map, you have you start with 60 pieces. So that's even longer than, than that first map. Um, and so that's one of the big detriments, I think, to this game. Now at Gen Con, I had quite a few different people I was able to play this with. And those uh, you know, range from people like myself who love Ticket to Ride, people that are okay with it, and then people that have never liked it. And so I had a good cross-section of people to play this with. And the feeling was sort of mutual here. Uh, and unfortunately, it's not a positive one for me. Um, I liked everything that was there. But again, the game went on long enough that I don't felt like it added a whole lot more depth to require it to be that much longer. Uh, you know, all the expansions tend to add little things that change the game, and some of them have changed it quite a bit, uh, but those typically run the same Ticket to Ride length, where these have changed, you know, quite a bit of things, but they didn't change it quite enough to make it be as, as long as it is. For, for what it is, it overstayed its welcome. Now, for the people that did never, that never liked Ticket to Ride, you know, you go back to that UK map expansion, and that is the gamer's game. If, you, if you've never liked Ticket to Ride, try that one, because that one is probably the meatiest and the, dip, the most different from any of them. I think that one's even more different and heavier than this one. Uh, so I just think that it goes on much too long. It, it just, if, it, with as little as me mechanisms has changed, now don't get me wrong, a lot of it has changed, but it's just the layers of depth there aren't enough to keep me interested for 90 minutes of playing Ticket to Ride. I'd rather just play something else, or I'd rather play one of the other expansions that does give me a, a flavor of, oh, this is different, but still play it in that 45 to 60 minute way. Uh, there were some uh, small production things I would recommend. Um, you know, sometimes it's really hard to tell between the boat cards and the train cards, uh, especially if you're sitting on the opposite side of the border where those are, like the black train and the black boat look very similar if you're st sitting way on the back sometimes. Um, and you know, some of those boats have those two little boat marks on them, but it would have been nice to, for the one boats to also have that boat mark. So we started, you know, putting it, so when a card comes out, we would put it on which side it's closer to the deck to help with that. Uh, but then, you know, even though these mechanisms are cool as grabbing different cards, the problem is, you know, you've got, you threw down a bunch of ships in a wild and people have to remember to go, okay, the ship cards go in the ship discard pile, the wild card goes in the other discard pile. And after a while you get used to it, but it does add a level of fiddliness to the game. Uh, you know, part of the biggest things about Ticket Rise, it's always been a very excellently streamlined game. It's elegant. And this game added a bit of clunkiness to it for the first time for me uh, that I didn't enjoy. Again, I liked the mechanisms. I don't like the byproducts or the side effects of these mechanisms and everything there. It's too long and it's a little bit of fiddliness. And so for that, it's, it's one that I'm, look, and it's really expensive. It's an $80 game. Uh, even online prices at my sponsor miniature market, you're paying almost twice as much for this game as you are for the normal ticket to ride. I think it might, unfortunately, I feel like this might fall into no man's land, uh, where it's just too expensive and not different enough and too long for people that like Ticket to Ride, and yet it's not different enough or heavy enough to get the people in that don't like it like the UK map did. Now, maybe they're gonna be making a ton more expansions where they'll utilize the boats and such, and maybe this would be worth owning to be able to get those. But for this alone, uh, for me, it's not what I hoped. This was my number two most wanted game in Gen Con. And unfortunately, I'm, for, the, for the first time in the Ticket to Ride series, I'm disappointed. Uh, and that is Ticket to Ride Rails and Sales. This video was sponsored by Miniature Markets Review Corner. The Review Corner features podcasts, video, and written game reviews by gamers for gamers. Miniature Market, the online gaming superstore. Thousands of board games, discounted prices. Check them out at miniaturemarket.com. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for backing me on Kickstarter and making this season become a reality. I'd like to especially thank those here that have backed me at the credit level. Now, these video reviews are also available by audio on our podcast. It's the intros and the final thoughts on GameboyGeek.com. Click podcast.